Okay, tennis player. Tennis player is standing 12.6 meters from the net when he or she hits the ball. The ball is hit at an angle of third, three degrees above the horizontal. To clear the net, the ball must rise 33 centimeters. So number one, was the ball at ground level when it was hit? No. So we just know from where the ball was hit, it needs to rise 33 centimeters in order to get over the net. If the ball just clears the net at the apex of its trajectory, how fast was the ball moving when it left the racket? What does it mean by apex of the trajectory? Highest point. Exactly right. So, rough sketch. There's our net. Here's the ball. I don't know how high it is above the ground, but it doesn't really matter. I know that distance is 33 centimeters. So the ball has an initial velocity. It's hit at an angle of three degrees above the horizontal. We want to know how fast. We already know what direction. We just want to know how fast. And again, we're ignoring drag. So the acceleration will be constant. Once the ball leaves the racket, there's nothing left to make it speed up or slow down horizontally. Now granted, while it's in contact with the racket, the racket certainly is causing it to accelerate. But while it's in the, uh, once it's left the racket, there's no more <laughs> acceleration. So approaching this the same way, it's right down the variables that show up in the kinematic equations. Let's choose an origin. We go ahead and make the original location when the ball is leaving the racket our origin. Then our initial x and initial y will both be zero. What about our final x and y? Final x? Twelve point six meters. We're looking at the point when it crosses the net, because that's what we know information about is when it's crossing the net. What about the final y? Thirty-three centimeters, which would be us yes, point three three meters. We're looking for the initial velocity. We don't know the x and y components of the initial velocity. If we find one, we can easily find the other. Final x velocity, we know is the same as the initial, but we don't know the value at this point. What about the final y velocity? Zero. If we're looking at just the point as it crosses over the net, we're told that that was the apex of the trajectory at its peak. The y velocity is zero at that instant. It's changing direction. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. Acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know the time. So we need to find either the y component of the velocity initially or the x component of the velocity initially. We can find either one. Since we know the angle, if we find one of the sides, we can easily find the hypotenuse. So thinking about our kinematic equations, which of these is going to be easiest to find? The x velocity or the y velocity? The y. We know more information about the y. In fact, the y, if we use the equation without time, We know the 
final y velocity is zero. We know the initial y position is zero. We know the acceleration in the final position. That's going to allow us to find the initial y component. of the velocity. Now it is plus or minus, but the positive answer is what we want. The ball is headed up, otherwise it couldn't go over the net. very fast, 2.54 meters per second. That's just the y component. That's not the total speed. That's how fast the ball is moving vertically as it leaves the racket. If we were to draw the velocity vector a little bit bigger, now this is highly exaggerated since the angle is only 3 degrees. It's just the y component that's 2.54 meters per second. We want to know how fast it was moving as it left the racket, so we want the hypotenuse is what we want. Oppositing, uh, opposite side, hypotenuse. So the sine of our angle, 3 degrees, will equal our opposite side, 2.54 meters per second, over our hypotenuse, which is just the total speed. So the total speed will be 2.54 meters per second over the sine of 3 degrees. So the ball totally is traveling at 49 meters per second. That's how fast it's going. Quite a bit faster than 2.54. So this side is 49. That represents totally how fast the ball was moving vertically. Interestingly enough, we didn't even need to know the horizontal information. We didn't do anything with the 12.6 meters. If we had not been given the angle, we would have needed the horizontal information because we would have needed to find the x component of the velocity as well. But since we were given the angle, it makes the problem a lot simpler.